welcome to this week's video. We're going to be talking about journaling. And I've been journaling for more than 10 years. So I know that just journaling is not the best type of journaling to do if you want healing. We're going to start right there. What is this healing that I'm talking about? I'm talking about, I mean, healing for me means integration, creating wholesomeness. That's what healing means to me. And in this context, that's what healing is going to mean. And I have fallen into ruts in my normal journaling where it's kind of like performative journaling. I would only go into journaling if I knew what I was going to say. Like, I know that I'm going to explain this kind of process that's going on in my mind and that's going to be my journaling. And that did not help me at all because it was performative. It wasn't like I was discovering something new. I was just writing stuff down that I had already figured out. <laughs> and that was my journaling. And I, for kind of a long time, I didn't notice that that was my journaling until I started exploring. Well, I started noticing that I'm not really getting as much from journaling as I used to. And so I started exploring new types of journaling. That's when I realized that, oh, my, the thing that I fell into in my journaling was actually kind of performative. I was just going there <laughs> to explain what's going on and kind of like to wrap it up in a tight little bow that didn't really, yeah, it wasn't helping me heal. So, oh, and also I should say that this kind of normal journaling that I'm talking about is not <laughs> the kind where you go i woke up today at seven then i went to school i did my homework and then i played with my cat no that's like a diary entry that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about like where you talk about yourself you talk about your feelings and you're kind of like journaling it out okay so that wasn't working for me so i tried different types of journaling and that's what i'm going to be talking about today three types of journaling that like skyrocketed my healing in the past year i guess yeah maybe less anyway they have been really good and i'm gonna start with the most probably most well-known one which is morning pages morning pages is when you the first thing you do when you wake up is write three pages of stream of consciousness long hands journaling and it's I think it started with a book called um, the artist's way and a lot of people really like it including me the goal with morning pages is that you clear your mind before anything else and so you can be more creative during the day but for me that hasn't been the goal exactly the goal for me with morning pages is to be radically, radically, radically honest. Meaning to follow rule number seven from the Manifesto of Simple. I'm going to link it. I mean, that's how I used it. I started doing this um, in the beginning of the year and it yielded some of the most mind blowing revelations about myself because I allowed myself to be just completely radically honest and have no plan and I put an end <laughs> to that type of performative journaling that I was doing before. I went into morning pages completely like I'm gonna write about what's on my mind right now. So much so that I sometimes I would not finish a certain sentence I would just break off into a new one. Oh I rem remember this, oh this, oh that and it's kind of like it helps you so much to expand and see like different parts of you and kind of allow every single part to talk every single thought to have a say and that means that there is going to be integration because you are allowing them to come to you like you are allowing them to just be there instead of having to reject them, ignore them, or like say that they're wrong. No, it's like everything is coming together. We're all talking together. We're kind of like, this is good. We're talking. So that really helps. I definitely recommend it, even though writing three pages, depending on the kind of paper you have, can take up to an hour. So I don't do it every single day. 
only if I feel like there's something that can come through that, like come through morning pages. And I totally recommend it. Next type of journaling is letter burning, which is totally in the name. You're gonna write a letter and then burn it <laughs> or rip it up, depending on your flair for the dramatic. <laughs> But what kind of letter is it, right? It's, uh, you're gonna write to a thing, a person, a situation, a memory, anything that's been bothering you. Like, if you have a thought or a feeling that keeps coming up, that's when you recognize that there's something to be said, something that wants to be expressed, and you sit down and write a letter to that thing or someone or situation or memory. Like, you can literally write to, dear, memory of when this da, 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 da. and then you just pour it all out things that you want to express with words or you can also like go like this on the paper if you're feeling angry or insult that memory that thing that person whatever whatever things that you wouldn't really want to say or you can't express like you can't talk to a memory so you would just lay it all out there on the paper Completely, like until you feel this is done. And then that's when you burn the letter or you rip it up. Now, it may happen that later on you want to write another letter to that same thing. That's happened to me. However, how I know that this really works is that the second letter has a totally different tone from the first one. And I see that there's an evolution. Like, okay, this is going. Like, I am working through this. I am processing this. This is being heard you know this is being integrated like this part is like calming down and like kind of being like becoming part of the whole that is me like if there's a part that's we're going to talk about parts a little later i'm really making a lot of use of this word but i think we can all understand like there are different parts of us if there's a part that's always sticking out like ah remember when this happened remember when this happened then i'm like that part is not integrated because it is going on like a whole different direction than what the whole of me is doing, right? I'm doing this and that part is like thinking about that other thing <laughs> instead of focusing on this one thing with the rest of my being, right? So that's how integration makes sense in this context. Okay, now about the burning and the um, ripping it up. Both work, by the way. I've done both and both have worked very well. Here's the thing that I think makes it so cathartic. It is the fact that you're actually using your body and your senses to make this thing disappear. So you write all these feelings and all the words and all the things, and then you set it on fire and it turns to ash. That is like an end that you can pinpoint. It's like, oh, I remember when that happened, when that all got turned up into little pieces and thrown in the trash. Like, that's trash now. I remember, like, <laughs> throwing it down the trash chute, right? And the fact that the body gets to experience that, it's not just your mind. Basically, it would just be one part of your mind telling another part of your mind that, hey, that's over now, that memory is gone. Like, which one do you believe? There are just two parts of the mind. But when the body comes in and you get to have that experience and give yourself that experience, that's like, definite. That happened. Remember that one time? Yes, I do. Oh, then it's settled. It's gone. It's over. Amazing. Um, <laughs> that's why I think it's so cathartic. And you should definitely try it. If you've never, like, I heard about this for years before I tried it. And I should have definitely tried it sooner. Anyway. Next type of journaling, parts journaling, which I've used this word so much throughout the video that maybe this should have been the first type of journaling, but it's my favorite. So I wanted to leave it to the end. And it is also the weirdest one. So I kind of wanted to leave it to the end. <laughs> okay, parts journaling. First of all, let's talk about parts just briefly. I heard about parts for the first time when I was reading The Body Keeps the Score, they talked about IFS, which is like a um, psychological theory that says that 
we have different parts of us that came up in our psyche as we needed protection from certain events. Like, for example, if your friend is always um, insulting your clothes or the way you look, maybe you will develop a protective part that goes, I don't care about fashion at all, I want to look as bad as I can, you know, that kind of thing. But also in more subtle ways. Anyway. I think we can all recognize that we do have different parts of us. Like, sometimes you have conflicting thoughts and conflicting wants. Sometimes you're like, yeah, I would like a new job, but I kind of also like my job right now, you know? This is the lack of integration. If things were very integrated and very, very whole, there would be no disparaging thoughts or conflicting thoughts. So, that's the parts part of this. What is parts journaling? Parts journaling is when you literally pick up a notebook and you talk to a part. And this is very, very strange when you think about it because it's like, I'm just talking to myself on a notebook. <laughs> but yeah, that's true. But it's also incredibly healing. So, <laughs> I wish that you will try it. And here's how you do it. Oh, but first, the goal with parts journaling is to hear out the part and make it calm down. Make it be like, oh, I see your side. Maybe there is nothing to protect ourselves from in this situation. Maybe I can calm down. Maybe I can be on board with you as we go into this different direction, right? That's the goal. It's not because it could be misconstrued as the goal is I need to convince this part to do what I wanted to do. I need to convince this part that there's no problems in the way that we're living our life. That is not the thing. We're not trying to trick ourselves in any way. We're trying to understand and listen and integrate so that we can truly be whole, not be like a, I don't know, like a dictator who has to keep everybody in line. And so they probably tell lies and there's a lot of intrigue. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to just be whole person. Okay, so how do you do parts journaling? <laughs> it is so weird, but this is what happens. You would write something like, well, first of all, a little detail is that I would write different symbols at the beginning of each person talking. So like maybe you can do a star when it's the part talking in a square when it's you, or whatever you want to do. Just like somehow distinguish the, bo the both of them. So, first of all, you would go like, huh, I feel like there are some conflicting thoughts here. I, I don't know why I'm so reluctant to take this new job, something like that. Then you would go open the notebook and be like, I would like to talk to the part that feels reluctant to take this new job. And then you would Take, do a body scan and be like, where is this part? What does it feel like in my body? Do I have a certain mental image of it? What's going on? And that's where you kind of just allow it to speak, come up. And maybe you would feel like a tightness in your chest or your neck is kind of hurting or your stomach drops, something like that. That would be the part. That's how it's expressing itself through your body. You tune into that then and you let it, you try to hear what, what it's saying. And maybe it will say, hi, or I'm here, or just like nothing, but like it is still there. So you maybe you would write like star because it's the part and you would write dot, 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 because it's not speaking, but it's there. And then just try to understand it. Try to listen to it, try to get it to open up to you so that you can like integrate. And usually it's a, what's happened in my parts journaling is that it's a part that has completely misconstrued what's going on. And it is thinking of some, something that happened in the past that it's completely like out of, <laughs> out of step with what's happening now, but it's just taking that in a wrong way and thinking that we shouldn't do this right now, right? It's dangerous for some reason. 
And in the end of my parts journaling, what I do is I ask them, so are there any like doubts that you still have like in us going in this direction? Like, are you on board completely? And I only end the journaling if the part says yes. And actually different parts can come up in the middle of that too. So it's kind of a very like, I don't know, it is also very cathartic, especially because you are writing it down. If I was just like talking to these parts, it wouldn't be as effective, I feel like, because you're not using the body. Like, I feel like the using the body thing is really important. If I'm just in my head, then it just gets muddy and I don't know what's happening and I don't know the conclusion. Writing it down is very important. Oh, I remembered a different type of journaling just now that I haven't done in so long, but it worked so well. I used to have, this was what, three, four years ago? I don't know, I was having some trouble sleeping. And I noticed that I was always thinking about memories from the past. So I made a note on my phone called every single past memory. And when I was having trouble falling asleep, I would notice most of the time that it was a memory from the past. And I opened the note and I just wrote it all out. I was like, this da -da -da happened, da -da 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 -da. and then as I, as I continued that, I would talk about, this was not fair, I didn't like this, it, this person should have done this, I should have done this. Blah, 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 like with no conclusion at all. I would just like say the things that I thought were wrong about that memory <laughs> or some feeling that I had connected to that memory. I would just write it in the note and I would fall asleep after that, like very easily. And something else, so interesting. I would not think about that memory anymore. And I can remember now that there was a specific memory that I used to think about a lot until it was the first thing I ever wrote on that note. I never think about it anymore, ever. Whoa, I cannot believe I forgot. Like, I am so into notes on my phone these days and I haven't brought that note back. I don't know why. I need to continue on with that note. Anyway, bonus fourth type of journaling, even though it's only a note on your phone, I think it can be considered journaling anyway it's just a bonus you know so that's it for the video by the way i have an anonymous google form where you can write questions to me it's linked below don't forget to use it it's fun and yeah share this video comment like subscribe send questions if you want and i'll see you in the next one bye Thank you.